Welcome to the Faith Lutheran Church Bible Study for Sunday, June 3rd, 2018. Today, Pastor Ernie Jung leads us as we continue our study on the Gospel of John. This morning, we focus on John chapter 4, verse 27 to 42. Let's listen in. Why don't we, uh, why don't we just begin with prayer? Uh, why don't we begin there in prayer? Uh, let us pray. Our dearly Father, we, uh, we thank you for this day, O Lord, uh, that you have brought us to your rest. And Lord, we know that through all things, uh, you are the one who restores and, and grants us uh, your peace. Lord, bless us. Um, in our hearts and minds and, and always lead us by your grace. May your promise continue to give us uh, the peace knowing that our labors um, that we may give them to you. Bless us as we uh, learn and, and relearn and digest uh, the great word of, of the meeting at the woman at the well and Lord that you are the great I am. For all these things we are thankful. We pray all this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, continuing here, um, I think uh, as we continue in the woman at the well, we see what is happening here in verse 27. The, the disciples are coming back to the scene. Right? So uh, beforehand, we see, as we look at John 4, uh, the woman is there. Jesus goes to the sidecar. He had to go by that way. Again, he could have gone um, easterly a little bit, as many of the Jews would, because they don't want to uh, uh, coexist uh, with, the Jew, uh, with the Samaritans. Uh, but there he had to go to visit this woman who needed to hear not only what she did, but who Jesus was um, as a savior of the world. I am he, right? I am, what does it say? Uh, I am um, I speaking speak to, to I am, I who speak to you am he, right? I who speak to you am he. And when we talk about uh, this realization that the woman had in John 4 uh, from the verses uh, 1 to 26, uh, she... Uh, she finally, um, she gets it, right? She gets it. But now, uh, the disciples, as we see in verse 8, uh, it, it reads that uh, they were going off to the city to buy food, right? So while they were buying food, Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, and now um, they're back, right? Now they're back. So if someone could read uh, verse 27 for me, verse 27. Just then, his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with the woman. But no one asked, what do you want, or why are you talking with her? All right. Um, so, uh, what is... Uh, when we talk about uh, the disciples coming onto the scene again, uh, why were they... Uh, why don't... Why didn't they say what they usually would? <laughs> I mean, they usually would say what? In their rhythm or, or habit. What would... They would say those things, right? Wouldn't they? Like, Jesus, come on. You know, you know uh, it's like in the feeding of the 5,000. You know, they don't, we don't have enough food, so send them home, right? Uh, why Why don't they say anything at this moment? Do you They're think? learning. That's what I want. Not to question him. <laughs> They're learning, right? A moment of restraint. But you know, even up to his, even up to his, uh, all the way up to the foretelling of his death and resurrection those three times, they still continue to question, right? Like, oh, we will always forget you. We will never deny. They're always infusing their own thoughts. So why not here? What are they sensing in this meeting with the woman at the well? What are they sensing in... Uh, in um, why are they hesitant to ask? I know it doesn't say, so that's a, a difficult thing to kind of infer, but... Uh, I think we can assume that they knew that something was actually, something extraordinary was happening. That Jesus was at the woman, uh, at the woman, um, at the well <laughs> with the woman, uh, with this Samaritan, and they were slowly connecting the dots saying, this is something, well, that, wow, this is something beyond um, our human understanding, and, and they're definitely trusting and marveling what Jesus was doing, because this was... This was not your ordinary circumstance, right? This wasn't what. This is not what usually is done. So, um, when the disciples come in, what happens? Verses twenty-eight to thirty. If we could read that, twenty-eight to thirty. I could do that. Then leaving, then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, "Come see a man who told me everything I ever did." Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their own way, their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. 
But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Okay, very good. Wait, did I? Okay, yes, very good. <laughs> so we see uh, in this 28 to 30 on your handout, so the woman left her water jar, right? Again, why was she going to the well? Oh, we have writing up here. <laughs> why, 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 uh, why did she go to the well in the first place? The beginning motive of going, why did she go? You know, have you ever done that at the grocery store? Yeah. It's like uh, you go, you're, you wait in the long line, you, you know, you got the cream cheese, you got the strawberries, you got uh, the asparagus, you know, you got the, uh, uh, the broccoli, um, you got all that, and then you're looking in line, you look at your phone, and you're in the front, and you see the list, you're like, oh man, I forgot the milk. <laughs> Ever done that? Why? Or sometimes you go to the grocery store and you're like, why am I here? What did I come for? Right? Uh, That's why you do, do you do that? Yep, yep. I, I don't know if you do that, but um, I, feel, I find that a list is good because it keeps you focused on what you need. Because knowing me, I come home with things that my wife says, we don't need that. We don't need that extra tub of ice cream. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I think we do need it. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not really a nice thing, guys. But um, weirdly. But uh, the point is, is that she, her motive was uh, to get water. Now, what type of water was she going to the well for? Again, um, in midday, where we know uh, she was known to be an adulterer, a, man, a woman of many relations, a one who was outcast, not only of uh, in society, and therefore she went midday, but... What, uh, when we talk about uh, her uh, motive, uh, she came for water that was to fulfill her thirst. thirst. And that thirst is physical, physical right? I know you would think F when I say it, but it's PH. <laughs> physical. I don't know if you noticed in the children's message, I did the, another one of those, uh, what did I do? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think Emily got it, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Emily got it. But someone said it. But anyways, I guess the point is, is that there was uh, a need of physical sustenance that 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 thirst needed to be quenched. Now, um, what happened here in verse twenty-eight? And simply, obviously, she she left her water there. Why did she leave her water there? What she had to say was more important than the water. Because the living water... Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we don't drink water, though. We, we, we need to drink water, right? It's good for our bodies. But the point is, is that at that moment, um, she had the living water of Jesus Christ. You know, when you have something so important in life that you realize in the faith, uh, clinging to what, who I... Um, the one who was speaking to her was he and I am he. This is where we see the all-important faith that she drops the water and goes where? Back to town. Back to, Back to town, right? To do something great, uh, to, 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 to proclaim. Uh, when you have uh, the cure for cancer, um, do you hide it? No, you, you, tell, you tell everyone, right? Well, I get a sense of excitement because... To, to lift up her water jar and put it on her head or her shoulder, however she carried it, she's not going to be running back carrying that water. So she leaves the water jar because she wants to get back to town quickly to tell what she's just heard. Yeah. She'll come back for her water later. Yeah. And if you think about it, she was pretty much a pariah in that town. <laughs> her and, her, and her so, reputation wasn't right. peak. And right? that's why she went to the well at the time she did. And so to kind of be so filled with this news that she would step beyond that and not kind of care about what people are going to think about mm -hmm. her because she's, she's just so anxious That's to, right. to tell point. them. It's overwhelming. That's and, right. And like, um, beyond her own yeah. reputation, too. I mean, that's, I mean, it is beyond her own. I, I, I was driving by at the store and I was trying to get the bell, you know, the. It's good to do the bell for good points, but uh, but no, that that's uh, I, I think that's a good point because I think uh, knowing her disp knowing her context, how difficult it would have been to just go to the crowd and say, "Look, I found him," mm -hmm. right? Um, 
And then we see right here, I think what we talk about leaving, and, and, and again, that, that uh, joy of knowing who the Lord is and knowing that he embodies the life-giving water that everyone needs. Um, and how much of a blessing that is uh, to see this woman just drop everything and go to tell the good news. Compelled was the word I was trying to find. It was like she was compelled. She, she couldn't help herself. Yeah, 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 in this faith, yes. I think there's something else that occurs here, <clears throat> and it, it's a realization. You know, we th it, it's probably obvious to everybody in the room here, but it's the realization that he is the Christ. But notice yes. that it occurs within the context of verse 26, and verse 26 in the English is not quite as strong as perhaps what she heard. Uh, Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. And once again, my mind almost explodes with the, the grammar there. Let's, <laughs> yeah, the big I am. It's the I am that's part of this. Now, the Samaritans accepted the Pentateuch, which contained the Book of Exodus, right? And I think it was so cool that the village knew that, and they were looking for the Messiah, even though they were tainted. They weren't like the Jews, but still, they knew. <clears throat> I they think, knew about the Messiah that was going to come. I, and, and I think when Jesus said that and said, I am, she understood everything then. Because what is the response of God when Moses says or asks the question, who do I say sent me to the uh, Egyptians? I am. You know, Jesus uses that term in numerous places. I am the bread of life. You know, and, and so forth. And so... If you reword it just a little bit, and I, th I think there are other translations that do actually put it that way, it's I am the one you're looking for. Yeah, that ego, you know, that ego a me in, in the Greek, we, we know that's the I am, uh, that, you know, I am what? Uh, the bread of life, I am the good shepherd, um, I am the light of the world, I am the gate, um, um, I am, I am he, you know. Uh, and, you know, Dave just kind of segued into the handout here. Uh, why, You're welcome. Why is Jesus, I am, significant? So why don't we turn to John 8, 58. And this is, uh, again, um, a, a reminder of who Jesus is as the incarnate uh, word made flesh, Jesus Christ. Uh, because we see right here, um, as we look at the discourse in 48, uh, we... we uh, we see the question, are you greater, verse 53, are you greater than our father Abraham who died and the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? And we see in uh, verse 58, Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. I am. So when we talk about that I am, and I think Dave brought up a good point, there's a great significance of what that means in their context and to know that this is, who in their midst? This is God. This is God. Right? <clears throat> uh, I don't know about you, but when I was little, uh, when I had bad news, uh, when I got bad grades on my report card and I got off the bus, I walked very slowly home. <laughs> <laughs> no, I took the long way. Like, not through the grass, but on the sidewalk. Because <laughs> I know my mother was at home, waiting for, how'd you on your report card? I did okay. I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but there were the days when I didn't do good on my report card, and I would go straight to the grass, run home, and give her my report card. I said, "Look, this is the good news. This is what I have." And I think it's a, it's not a similar thing that what she saw, but I, I think when we have the good news and we know the I am uh, that He was right. Jesus is before Abraham, right? Before Abraham, I was. I am He. Uh, he is the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the one in creation. There Jesus was. There he was in their midst in the flesh. For the woman to see that, this is beyond just your living water out of the well. Or, or where's the bucket? Can't you get us some water out of the well? This is No, this is the living water that they were truly waiting for. And this is ours too. That's a thing. Right? I mean, we as Christians, we have the same gift of the gospel of Jesus, I am, right? We, we have uh, the forgiveness of sins and the joy of salvation uh, that is in Christ alone. And I think as we look at the woman, I think it's easy to say, of course she went back and she told everyone in town, right? 
But I think when we look at our own lives, I think at times we forget that. Right? The joy of what it means to be in the name of the Lord. I think we forget the great joy it is to be a child of Of course I'm forgiven, right? We, we always say, yes, I'm a child of God. I, by His grace, He has saved me and rescued me. But at times, I, I think the world, it, it, can, it can get us away from the I am and the joy of what uh, the Lord gives by His promise. And I think for the woman, it's a great reminder because we are that woman. You know, we are the one that is, that is uh, born into sin. You know, we're, we're not perfect. Uh, we're not like, oh, how could the woman do that? No, in, in, in this picture, we should look at ourselves and say, that's me right there, right? That's, that's me falling short of the glory of God. And what a, great, what a great joy that is to know that by the body and blood of Jesus I am. I have the cure uh, to the, uh, the cure for my soul, uh, the remedy of the cross. Yes, Marjorie, yes. I think that it's very interesting that once again, um, God has chosen someone that we would not consider to be worthy or a likely candidate to be a spreader of anything other than negative things. <laughs> oh, wow. I wasn't going there. <laughs> anyway, um, because then um, it, it later says about the fact that many of the Samaritans, says, it's amazing that first of all, they listen to her and act on what she says. They then go out. And secondly, and come to him, it, right? yeah, yeah. And then secondly, it says many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. So here is another example of God using somebody that we would never choose, and He uses us the same way if we just would kind of like open ourselves up to that and and realize that we can step out and and give testimony. Well, yeah, I, I think when we talk about worthiness, it always brings up uh, Wayne's World. I don't know if you know Wayne's World. That name. <laughs> uh, Brent knows. You know, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> oh, that, no, that was kind of my late seventies, early eighties. And Jeff knows. Anthony knows. Anthony, do you know? Oh man. Oh man. Wayne and Garth. Anyone? Yes. I know Anyone? who they are. Yes. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Anyways, I think they were from Simi Valley. Weren't they from Simi Valley? San Dimas. San Di- Wow, you are good. <laughs> That's right. So San Dimas, my bad. So, uh, uh, but the point is, is that uh, Jesus does not use worthy people because are there worthy people out there that Jesus can use? No, no one is worthy. Not even one, right? We're, uh, but yet there is that false sense of worthiness that people like the Pharisees, tell themselves that they have worthiness or holiness. But here he uses, as, he, as we always know, for the broken, uh, the weak, those who are mired in their affliction. And here uh, uh, the woman is used right, uh, for his glory. And well, not only a woman, which would have been enough, but a fallen woman. <laughs> yeah. So. With great, a uh, bad reputation. Yeah, probably the no last one. person that the disciples ever would have chosen. Yes, yeah. yes. Very good, very good. So, you know, as we look at this, again, uh, the I am is huge. You know, when we talk about, and I want you to, you know, you can go throughout the book of, I know John has a lot of I am's, but, man, when you talk about I am, um, that is our faith right there. Our faith is in the I am. Our faith is in God and what he gives um, 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 as the light of the world, as a bread, right? Um, as a good shepherd, you know, John 11. So it, it's, a, it's a good uh, thing to review for yourself. Uh, verse... Now, again, um, the disciples are here, and they do say something, right, um, in John 4, uh, 31 to 33. If someone could read that real quick, John 4, uh, 31 to 33. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My right. food said... Oh, Yes. Before we, I want to be on that cliffhanger, you know. So, okay. they so, brought him food. Yeah. So again, uh, when we talk about uh, the food, what is, what are the? The right back to the physical. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Within just a few minutes, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. So they did stop and halt to say, hmm, "Should we say no? We won't say anything. We'll just marble." And now it's like, where's your food, Rabbi? You know, teacher. Uh, here's his food. Where, where is it? Oh, I, I, I have food. And they were talking amongst one another. Um, where did he get this food? Or 
where did or did he eat or, or something like that. So they were they were uh, still in the realm of like the women uh, thirsting or thinking in the peripheral, right, and on this on the surface. And uh, yes. But what's wrong with that? <clears throat> because he he is human, and he does have physical needs. And yes, they good. They are taking care of him. Their their thoughts are are for his safety. Yes, well being, welfare. Well being. Yeah. Good. Uh, just as um, the the who who washed Jesus's feet with her hair. Mary, definitely. Mary yeah. Um, I mean, she's taking care of his physical needs. Sure. Right? Yeah. That's right. No, that's it. I think that's a good point. But in this context, I think there's a, a bigger message that Jesus wants to send to them. But you're right. Uh, Jesus was hungry. He needed food. He was human. Uh, the disciples are always looking out for him. And I guess on one level, uh, again, we see the humanity of Christ, uh, that he is indeed in need of food to live. And uh, they were there. But as we look, as we look at the next verse... We clearly see what Jesus is really trying to say in this in this context. And Carrie, I think uh, you have a good point there. Uh, but uh, he says what? If someone could read 34 for me. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Okay, good. So what is the food uh, that Jesus is supposed to do? What is the food uh, that he has been called to do? To do the will of the Father. And to do the will of the of the Father, to accomplish the work of God. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish um, accomplish um, his work. So when we talk about accomplish or finish or complete uh, from the word teleo or telos, um, I know uh, Jesus on the cross says what? It is finished. That is uh, uh, telestai from the word telos. So we see uh, the complete work of Christ uh, being given here. And this is what he has been called to do, right? Uh, not consumed by the endeavors of man, Jesus came to accomplish the Father's will. <clears throat> man searches and strives to find the material which is their deepest need, but Jesus comes to fulfill his deepest need as a Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Right? So man searches out for food. Uh, Jesus uh, searches out for you. Right? The will of God. That is to die uh, for the sins of the world. Yeah. To give you the comfort and peace knowing that you are forgiven. We see the question right here. Uh, what is the will of man? What is the will of God? How does the perspective of Jesus and the disciples concerning food... Um, actually, I don't know if that's a good question to ask. Answer this question. <laughs> Anyways. Why did I write that? I know there was a reason. It was <laughs> like fireworking when I was like, oh, that's a good question. That's a, I don't know. Anyways. Uh, You're supposed to write down the answer so that you remember why. I know. And I was, my time schedule was all planned, but then the whole can't find my file. I think that's called a senior moment. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for laughing along with the good joke. <laughs> oh, and laughing again. <laughs> again. So anyways, uh, so we see. <sighs> that's why I play board games, Susan. To keep up. But obviously it isn't <laughs> registering as much as I want it to. Uh, but again, uh, when we talk about uh, the will of man, I guess I'm trying to get here, to, trying to figure out why I wrote this, but uh, the will of man, as we see uh, the disciples, their will is to take care, right? And I think Carrie has a good point. We can't, we can't just dash out what they were doing, but I think we can look at the disciples and say, oh yeah, they were looking out because Jesus needed food and, and he needed to eat. Because for man, um, I think a lot of times we are seeking our physical, right? We are seeking, I mean, we work, we buy food. Uh, God gives us a job, and we buy food, we go to the store, uh, we buy the food, bring it home, feed the kids, uh, feed ourselves, right? This is uh, the daily sustenance that God gives. Uh, but when we talk about the will of God, um, give us this day our daily bread, of course, right? But what is, when we talk about thy will be done, as we talked about it at a large catechism class, what is the will of God? That is to break and hinder the devil's work. Right? To bring salvation to the world. Right? Forgiveness, life, salvation. This is the will of God. So when we talk about the perspective... Okay, I think I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the youngest one here. No, it's Anthony's the youngest one. Oh, man. Anyways, but the perspective, <laughs> the perspective of Jesus 
shows us uh, 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 clearly um, why he sees food in the way he does, right? Um, that this food is to do the will of the Father. And this will um, cannot be done by anyone else. That's why earlier we see the woman unworthy. Uh, we, in our unworthiness, cannot, as we talk about at our Tuesday Bible, not that I'm trying to mention all my Bible classes, <laughs> but at our Tuesday Bible class about ascending to the Lord. We can't. Because we're not worthy. We can't ascend, right? We can't. We need him to descend. And this is where we see clearly uh, the picture of food and how the will of God uh, uh, descends to man uh, to save us from our sin. So, um, oh, yes, David. A quick one. You know, I think Kerry has a point. And if you look at all the Gospels, put them all together, I don't think the disciples really understood everything until the 40 days after the resurrection. Because what does Jesus do during that time? Well, he's out some, but he's teaching them. And it seems like they don't, even even the day of the, the crucifixion, they're not really understanding what's going on. So he's trying to switch their thinking from in terms of the physical wants and needs to the spiritual. And this doesn't have... It, it doesn't happen with any of us overnight. Some of us, it takes a whole lifetime. So it's not altogether unreasonable that they would have been looking still at the physical. I mean, this is early in the ministry yeah. that it's yeah. occurring. So. Yeah. yeah, and you're, you know, good point. Again, you know, it's a uh, thing. So good. <laughs> that's my, well, the that's my free thought. The well just seems to be. have a clearer understanding yeah. of who he is than his disciples. Yeah, that's isn't that isn't that ironic how that works? Yeah, right. Uh, so clearly, we see the faith uh, given, and uh, you know, we look at food and we see. Oh, yeah, that's right. We we see the the will of man and the Lord hungering and thirsting to do the will of God, and that will of God isn't easy, as you know. Um, you know, to be perfectly obedient, sinful, sinless, um, to die on the cross and to endure that pain. This is his food. Uh, it's like me. Um, you know, I used to live in Washington, so when I used to get the baseball, I used to get the baseball channels uh, down here, and um, they'd always have an In-N-Out commercial on Fox Sports <laughs> West, and I'd sing it in, in Washington, and, and the kids were like, okay, Dad, again, why are you singing that? Because I look at that food, and I'm like, oh, man, it's so good. I'm hungry, and just, I, I just want to eat that, and we, as humans, that's what we strive to do. Now, again, when we look at Jesus... I'm not sure if we're in and out, but uh, well, we might. But uh, we can. I did pass by the other day and say, no, not today. And I'm like, how dare you say not today? <laughs> like, what have you become, right? I told myself that. Blase. So, now you can have it every day. Oh, what have I become, right? Take it for granted, the Lord's gifts. So, uh, uh, but, uh, but again, when we talk about... When we talk about hungering... Uh, we see right here um, uh, that this is what Jesus, he hungered. He, he hungered uh, for the cross. Think about that. He, this is his food. This is what I'm going to take. Right? It's not, it's not a, a juicy hamburger with fries on the side in animal style and, and with extra spread, right? And extra pickles, double onions, you know? It's not that. Double, double. It, it, <laughs> that's right. It, it's a, or four by four. Uh, but it, it's, it's the... <laughs> It's the nail, not that I know all those, the verbiage, I do, but, uh, but it's the nails of the cross, that's his food. See, don't you see, uh, this is the life of Christ and what he has come to do, and he is teaching the disciples uh, this very uh, thing. So, uh, yes, my food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to accomplish, tell us, to complete, to finish his work, so that we're here today with peace. Like, I can die today and it'll be okay. Because we know where we're going. Right? It's the Lord. Um, and um, I always tell my kids that too. It's, see each other again. You know, we're, we're going to the same place, baptized into Christ, faith in Jesus. We're good. Right? This is what it's all about. Because of this, I am right? Jesus Christ. And that's so important. Because again, uh, what a great gift this is that he does the Father's will. And this is his food, his portion. Right? And our cup overflows. Right? Isn't that what it says in the Psalm 23? Right, Our cup mm-hmm. overflows. And that is our life, you guys. Uh, what a great gift this is. So, um, 
Yes. Uh, okay, verse 35 as we continue here, moving along. Very good. Verse 35. Do not say four months more and then the harvest. Or do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. All right. So, uh, so yes. Uh, do you not say they are yet four months, then come the harvest? So they're not, where, they're really not. Are they ready? No, they're not, right? They're not ready. It's, it's probably around December at the time, and they're like, we have more time to go. Uh, but yet, through this meeting, we clearly see that the time has it's come. come, right? It's not on our time schedule. It's on the Lord's time, and the harvest is near, right? The time has come. This is, again, not on their own perspective, right, of food or water or being born again, right, Nicodemus, it's not on our own, but this is by the word of the Lord. Uh, people are, as we'll soon see, coming to the Lord through that woman's testimony. The harvest is now. The, the time is coming where Jesus is to fulfill the will of the Father. Uh, that is to go to the cross. Um, and, um, and we'll see what this sowing and reaping is all about. So the time is now. And um, Jesus has come uh, to do this very work. And there people are coming uh, to hear what he is going to do as the I am, right? Uh, verse 36, verse 36. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. So what's this all about? Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. What? So what does a sower do, just in planting metaphors, what does a sower, uh, plants the seed. Slow, slower, sower, <laughs> plants, cast the seeds, cast out, right? Yeah. Uh, what does a reaper do? Harvest. He gathers, right? Mm -hmm. Gathers the harvest? Mm -hmm. So, uh... When we talk about uh, the sower and the reaper, uh, or uh, we, we clearly see right here that Jesus is the one who has come to gather the world, right? Isn't he? Jesus, the, our one true God, gathers the world to himself because we cannot gather ourselves to him. He comes to the world and he gathers us by going to the cross to die for our sins, shedding his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And he gathers us. Um, call, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies, and keeps us in the true faith, right? By the power of the Holy Spirit, the Reverend Creed. And here we see him, the, uh, uh, Jesus, reaping uh, uh, this crop as he gathers everyone to himself as a good shepherd. And he gathers them by being the good shepherd. I lay my life down for the sheep, and I bring it up again by my own accord, right? This is uh, uh, clearly, as we see right here, uh, what this reaping is all about. And yes, he is fulfilling the will of the Father, Right? Uh, he is gathering fruit for eternal life, and there, the the uh, the Father and the Son, they are rejoicing. Right? <laughs> they are rejoicing. This is the Father's will. Do, do you see it? How oh, sorry, I'm starting to yell. This is the Father's will, <laughs> as you see it. Uh, the great rejoice of His will that is to come to the world to die for our sins, and what a great joy that is for God. This is our God. This is what He. Uh, desires to do for us because he loves Joyce and Dave and all of you so much. Um, John 3.16, we talked about it um, a couple weeks ago. But this is, um, when we talk about uh, uh, the picture of who our Father is, what great peace we have knowing that his will is done. We look at our handout here, and uh, it says John 12.24. So why don't we turn to it? Um, and we see right here, John 12.24, uh... Talk about seeds being planted. What's this all about? Someone could read that. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. All right. So what's this all about? That's a weird, uh, that's some weird words I write there, I guess, if you initially look at it. But what does that mean? The, um, and in context, it says right there in verse 23, the hour has come. Remember the hour, right? Talking about his upcoming 
death, right? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth <coughs> and... Yeah. Right? Casting the seed. Uh, and that seed is Christ. Right? Gathering by his death. Where there in his death he bears much fruit. Right? So we see uh, clearly when we talk about uh, the sower and the reaper uh, rejoicing together, this is the plan of God and the will of God as we talk about my food and, and what he has come to do to gather the harvest uh, through his work. This, I love that picture of the seed coming down only to die, but gathering this flock by bearing, uh, gathering the people uh, bearing fruit by the way of his death. Uh, this is the hour uh, that has come for Jesus. And what a great picture that is. And I love that picture of the reaper and the sower rejoicing together uh, because he's rejoicing about you, right? Um, and, and what a great uh, joy that is uh, to be part of that rejoice. Okay, um, I hear, I know we're not done yet, but uh, John, <laughs> I, am not it. I, am not it. I know you're not. So anyways, <laughs> verse, <laughs> verse 37, 38, uh, we see right there, if someone could read that, in uh, chapter uh, 12. That's the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. All right. So all the way, you know, when we talk about uh, sowing and reaping uh, from Christ, uh, Genesis 3, to the Old Testament prophets, all the way up to St. John the Baptist, uh, we see all the labors that uh, uh, the prophets went through, uh, the patriarchs went through, so that we may... Uh, see the message of Christ. And this is the labor that we have. We see the disciples who will soon be the sent ones um, in that early church to preach the gospel, right? Uh, we see this day as well, that as we continue to live, uh, we too are those that uh, uh, continue to share that gospel to those uh, that are around us. And um, I know for the young families here, um, to do that within our homes. You know, uh, our house is the greatest evangelism field because... Uh, we're around them so much, and uh, to pray with them, and to guide them, and to um, uh, bring them to church, and to um, um, sit down and read the word with them. All of this, all together, where we have our rest. This is, uh, this is what it's all about, and we see uh, the labor which the disciples will soon go through after what, as Dave saw, talked about, uh, being taught, right, for 40 days, and there Jesus ascends, and he says, now it's your turn, go. By the power of the Holy Spirit, go. He witnesses Acts 1-8, right? Samaria today, all the ends of the earth. Uh, this is what they were called to do. And this is, again, the labor. But again, this is not labor that is, as we talked about this morning with, uh, I love that epistle text, right? About not being struck down, though persecuted, not being moved. That, that's such a good picture of, yes, we will labor, but yet uh, we are unmoved because of Jesus and what he has done for us. Yes, we will face suffering, and that's okay, right? It's okay, because we are what we are. But Christ is the I Am, and He covers us by His grace. And we continually uh, uh, rejoice in that, even in the midst of our suffering. So we see right here uh, that, yes, um, that we, uh, through the Father and the Prophets, is their labor that the disciples will continue to work and gather the harvest in the field. And that is our call in life. Um, to gather and, and to bring people to Jesus and, and, and to baptism and to his word and sacrament. That is our call. So verses 39 to 42 as we uh, close today, 39 to 42. So could read that. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Okay, so um, when we talk about... Uh, what is it, John? I think um, when we talk about uh, that word, you know, it's interesting because uh, we look at... Uh, uh, yes, okay. We look at, we, we look at these verses, and clearly... They, they believed because of the woman's testimony, but what happened? 
uh, the, the Samaritans came to stay with us, right? Uh, stay in the Greek is uh, uh, from the word uh, meno, which is uh, remain. Meno is also abide. So it's like remain in us, um, abide with us, stay with us. And during that stay, what happened? They believed because of his? Word. Yeah, the, the logos, right? This word, right? They believed because of his word. Right? Faith comes by hearing. Y- you believe in Christ because of the words that were given to you in your baptism. You believe in Christ because when you hear that gospel, there in the midst of your sin, you are forgiven of your sins. But there, um, by that word, you are restored, renewed, and you are well-rested, right? This is all by the word. They believed because of the word. These things are written, right? John 20, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, so that you, when you believe in him, you'll, you'll have eternal life and you'll have life in his name, right? This is, when we talk about the Samaritans, they, Jesus remained with them, right? Remain in me and I in you, John 15, right? The vine and the branches, similar thing. Um, and it's so important that we see this remaining as our key because what is the devil trying to do? Tear you away from that, right? Um, and I want you to know that because it's re- every single moment that we live, we are still, though we are redeemed, we still face this thing <laughs> that we call our flesh. And there daily, uh, we ought to remain. We need to remain for our own benefit in the Word of God. As we talked about earlier in the ser- uh, sermon, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. It's not like, as I said in the sermon, it's not like we huff and buff and get like a child go to the church. I know when I was little, I, I kind of we're late. Why do we have to go? You know, we go, and I'm a child. I'm like, I don't want to go. I'm tired. I, you know, just let me be. But my mother will say, no, we're going. We're going. We're going. And at times, I would see it as, a, as an obligation, and I failed to see the benefit of what church was. Right? But when we look at what, why God brought uh, the Sabbath day here to give us rest, not only in the order of creation that we as physical beings need rest physically, right? We do. I don't know about you, but if we work seven days a week, I know Chris, I told someone the other day that she has 50 million jobs. I don't know which one she does. But anyways, <laughs> but the point is, is that uh, it's easy to uh, go without that. What was I saying? To go without that rest and uh, to go. I don't think that's what I was saying. But, um, oh, I'm on a different road. Anyways, uh, the point is, uh, oh, yes, uh, hearing the word of God. And we see right here to remain in the God's word uh, because they're, uh, 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 the devil has no, <coughs> has nothing on us. But to very well know that the devil is alive and well trying to tear us away. But that's why the word is so important. That's why we always tell you to be in God's word, right? Be in the Sabbath, be in his rest. Come to church, be in his rest. Receive the word sacrament, be in his rest. Read and pray your Bibles. Uh, uh, do your devotions at home, be in his rest. Because daily we live in this devil's kingdom. And daily in his word we remain. And that is, uh, that is this woman's testimony, right? And that is ours too. So remember that this day. You know, in conclusion, we look at your uh, handout. We talk about Nicodemus. We talk about uh, the woman at the well. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, Samaria and the picture of uh, the atonement for all the world. Uh, races, tongues, ethnicities, salvation is for all. And it is for you. And what a great joy this is as we see this great interaction with the woman at the well and Jesus. Okay. Good. <laughs> so, um, very well. Any thoughts before we close? All right. Very good. Very good. Uh, let us pray. Let us pray. Uh, dearly Father, we, we thank you for this day, O oh Lord, uh, that you have brought us to this time. Lord, we know that uh, you are the living water. Uh, the one, uh, the, the spring that is eternal, and, and that you continue to uh, restore and renew us by, uh, by the food that you give us. Lord, uh, we just thank you for the gift of salvation and, and the joy, knowing that we are your children. Uh, continue to lead us, O oh Lord, as we walk in your name, and may this joy continue to grant us peace as we are equipped and ready uh, to uh, go out to this world Uh, to fulfill the vocations that you have given to us. May we do it with a joyful heart, and may we go off on knowing full well that you are with us always until the end of the age. We thank you, O Lord. Uh, We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
Thanks for listening to this Bible study presentation from Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. For more information, visit us on the web at faithmoorpark.com.